Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Silent Fire. Silent Fire. The podcast. The podcast. The podcast. The one and only. The one and only. I was thinking today. I hope we're the only. I don't actually know. Yeah, I don't know. That's right. Well, if you look up Silent Fire on YouTube, at least, what you see is either our podcast or um, images of fire in a fireplace. Oh, that's wow. You know, that's essentially what it is. I was I was thinking just today, mm-hmm. who who decided it was called a podcast? Like, what does that even mean? Like, what's the pod that you're casting? I'm, I, I don't, I was, it was just a, you know, it's like the whole thing with who was the first person who thought about milking the cow. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. And yeah. then you think yeah, about or the egg or something. Or yeah, whatever, eating right? the egg. Yeah, who was like, um, well, let's take that egg and fry it up and it'll be Write really that good. down. That'll be a new podcast Yeah, new episode. podcast one, right? What is, a, what what, is podcast? What is a podcast? Yeah. Yes, yeah. <laughs> that's right. Um, so welcome everybody uh, to another episode of Silent Fire. And uh, we're so we so appreciate the comments mm. that you've been leaving. Uh, people were commenting that so good that we were back. Our yeah, schedule yeah, sporadic in terms of when we release these episodes, um, and so it'll it will be for, you know, we'll, we'll do them when we can. Yeah, uh, yeah, and sure. uh, hoping to have them weekly, but that generally doesn't happen. So, um, and uh, so yeah, we we release the podcast when we can. Um, you'll get a notification for sure when if, you on there. if you subscribe and you, like and bell yeah, and leading yeah. into that. <laughs> That's all right. of that subscribe to the youtube yeah um and you can use your favorite podcasting app mm-hmm. subscribe to the mm-hmm. podcast you'll get notifications when we post a new episode um and so it's starting to turn into summer a little it bit. is it's yeah. beautiful you out. told me you were at the beach the other day begrudgingly uh, yes no your wife was wife at was beach. at the beach yeah. with the dog yeah begrudgingly you wouldn't you yeah I'm not what's a, your relationship like with the beach calling uh <laughs> i'm not a i'm not a big i'm not a big beach guy i like to go i go and i swim and then i get out and i go yeah. home yeah, as opposed to a big guy on the beach yeah 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 exactly yeah yeah, right. yeah, yeah. this whole laying around on the beach and just laying in the sun is not to uh, not, it's not for calling. no i on the other hand am completely the opposite yes yeah, well i'm from the north atlantic you're from california that's true so yeah i guess uh, that's yeah. reflective of our um the, the God put us in, that's right, in that's right. separate places on purpose. <laughs> yeah. So I can ba- I can love the beach as much as you don't love it. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. we can balance each other out. Absolutely. But I did promise Colin uh, that this summer I was going to bother him every weekend and say, hey, we're going to the beach with the kids. You, go, you guys should come. We'll go. We'll go. Yeah, okay. We'll go. Yeah. We'll Will go. You, do you have a full uh, full length? I just wear bathing this. suit. You just, just wear, wear this. With, <laughs> with, with or without the collar. Sometimes with. This is probably why I don't have fun at the beach. Yeah, that's, right. that's right. <laughs> fun side story is uh, Aaron and I, our wedding was on the beach mm. um, out in British Columbia. Mm-hmm. And it was 30 plus on the oh. day that we got married, August 2nd. And I had a black on black tux. And Aaron, her, the, her and the bridal party, we're about 45 minutes late to the ceremony. Dude. And so I was just, yes. Bad choice. You need the white tux for the, for the beach. About halfway through the ceremony. It wasn't a long ceremony, but a halfway through the ceremony, someone started blowing up a, um, like an inflatable mattress about 10 feet away from <laughs> where we were. It's like, <laughs> and there was a guy standing right off um, to the side. Uh, in speedos watching fantastic, watching fantastic. us get married yeah. so i mean we had a, it was a beautiful ceremony yeah, yeah. 70 people there and we had the whole thing set up but the characters that you find on the beach are mm. did the speedo guys make the director's cut of the uh, wedding video uh, um yeah. i think if you if you watch the wedding video it, you know this was we got married in 2009 so this was kind of having a smartphone that could do a decent video was yeah, not right. a thing that no. you know, we tend to, it's funny how we tend to not remember that yeah 10 to what we've been married for this will be 12 year 12 um having a smartphone in 2009 that would actually record something mm-hmm. beyond 144p or something yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. just yeah. wasn't a thing no and indeed. and even we we did have some video from a handheld camcorder mm-hmm. but even then that's someone, someone had to like crank it like this that's kind time. of feels yeah. that way yeah that's yeah. right um so he probably did make the cut yeah i know there's some pictures i think he's in the background nice. of, Good. um Good. Anyway, so I digress. We're talking this about the beach. A bit of a I, you can tell yeah. it's starting to be summer because I'm just thinking beach, beach, oh, yeah. beach. Um, so our real topic for today is not the beach. It's not the beach. But we are going to talk about the anointing. The anointing. The anointing. T-H-E-E anointing. Ah, okay. Or anointing. Or anointing. Yes. Okay. Uh, because I know. A good Anglican language. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Using the these and the thous. Yeah, 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 okay, yeah. that's good. Yeah. Um, 
I I know that in in the the mo- the charismatic movement and mm. Pentecostal even you know some of the some of the more um, outward oh, you, you were at a um, our ordination ceremony yeah right yeah. we had ordained our uh, new head pastor um, last weekend and you had said to me that that was more emotion than you had seen in a song in a whole service in a whole service <laughs> right for <laughs> years right. yeah yeah it's like just compressed probably all since 10 all... <laughs> years of anglican worship there's not that much emotion that i saw in 10 minutes so there's yeah. just differences that's yeah. what that's my point is there's differences yeah. in how we express things and so i know that there's certain things that we think about from from my background when we talk about anointing mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and i think they're pr- quite distinctly different in not so much in the practice or the importance of or something mm. like that and we'll we'll dive into that but when when someone says um when someone uses the term anointing um i'm going to have specific things i think of and you're going to have specific for things sure you think of for and sure those are not necessarily going to be the same thing so can so the the issue is today can we find common ground on that yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah. just talk yeah. about it and yeah. have a conversation like we've been having um in these episodes exploring the different ways that we practice Mm -hmm. um our faith and the different ways that we understand what scripture communicates to us and what we're to do and and so for the first question of the day is to to call in nicole what is anointing what is the anointing and anointing when someone says the term anointing what what do you think about what Um, what kind of what what do you conjure up oil Oil, oil, oil. That's interesting because we oil. don't. Yeah, right. See? No, I, and I never wouldn't. Right, right. having been raised yes. Roman Catholic and now an Anglican. I mean, if someone says the word anointing or anointed, my mind is always going to go to oil. Yeah, um, it's if I said there's an anointed one, you would say it was someone that we had just put, we oil, put oil on them. Yeah. yeah, and we would we would just it just would not yeah. be the same terminology. No, I mean that lingo, I guess scripturally. Sure, uh, or, I mean Jesus Christ was the anointed sure, one. Sure, yeah, right? Christ I mean, I meaning. Don't. The, the literally the the anointed one sure yeah so i mean there is a sense in which it's not only oil but i mean if sure. we're referring to anyone but him um what what the what syllable do we put the emphasis on right? yeah exactly yeah. yeah 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 the emphasis yeah, yeah the emphasis um, there you go, yeah. yeah we always go to oil uh because oil in the i mean in in roman catholicism and anglicanism orthodoxy probably, yeah. probably lutheranism too um i mean if we're going to anoint someone Usually it's 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 almost always oil, and usually they're sick. That's where we go to. Now that's right. not that's not exclusively uh, because oil is also used in ordination services. Like when you when I became a priest, sure, my hands were anointed um, by the bishop. Why the hands? Um, uh, for service, kind of. Because that was your that's, 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 yeah, the, yeah. The, Was it a symbol or a sign? <laughs> a sign or symbol? We may get into that in yeah, this yeah, episode. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, I mean that's a good question, and that and that comes up too in terms of the sacramentality of anointing, right? Is, right. Is 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 anointing, and when we say anointing, I mean usually we're not just talking about, um, like the single act of me putting oil on someone. Anointing is uh, like it is a service. Um, oh, and really? It is, okay. Is anointing. So you have an anointing service specifically for the same. We might yeah. not call it that, but. That's the purpose of it. Yeah, well, we call yeah. it called called unction too. Um, okay, right, right, um, right. Um, extreme unction. Someone who is anointed would have an unction. That's right. They would. You would have one in your pocket. I have a little thing with. Oil. No, no, no. I mean, if they were anointed, they would have the unction of the Holy Spirit to do something. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> See, this, this is, is our language, way. right? <laughs> Doesn't work. Doesn't it's work. right. Yeah. No. <laughs> I don't. So we always go to oil. Yeah, yeah. It's almost yeah. always when you're sick. I mean, we have the Book of Common Prayer sitting in front of me, of course, and uh, and the service there is is really it's in the context of the laying on of hands and anointing, right? Um, and so, it's, which is is it Peter or James? That, James. That James, James talks about sure. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, call for the elders of the church, and right? Anoint with oil right. and all of that. So those who are sick. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's like it's like a deeply biblical uh, thing, and and. Um, and, and that's the context in which we talk about it. So this this idea of the anointing, right, is totally. But so if I said, uh, if I was talking about that person has the anointing, you would think about what specific anointing was that? Was, would it would it be yeah. fair to say you would say, oh, is it? Does he have the anointing of the sick, or does he have the anointing something of the like priestly that. service? Yeah. I mean, or? to think to think of someone as having the anointing would right. just be a weird way to think about it for me. Sure. I, if you said that person has been anointed, I might think with what and for what. Sure, um, right. but to talk about the yeah, anointing sense, yeah. as a thing is totally. 
and kind of porn. In in the I hopefully I can do it justice in the sense of what the the kind of that charismatic type of understanding is mm-hmm. Pentecostal charismatic uh, from that side of things. Um, and I don't want to characterize the entirety of the evangelical church in this way um, because you you have so much varying degrees within the evangelical mm-hmm. uh, the evangelical tradition and and so you're gonna have you definitely have denominations within the evangelical tradition that um, would would think more along the lines sure of, sure uh, that you're thinking as opposed to because because in the charismatic tradition that the anointing is something that's kind of um, it's it's kind of an ethereal spiritual thing right right okay. that's okay. that would be the the if I was to say, um, someone walked in the anointing. That would be language that we would use, right? Yeah, I wouldn't um, know what you're talking about. No, you wouldn't. And <laughs> and the idea is that this person is is, is exceptionally gifted, or mm-hmm. um, maybe in the area of prophecy, maybe mm-hmm. in the area of healing. So, I mean, it would probably have a connection in the sense sure. of what we would think the person was anointed to do, right. and the and the types of unction services that you would have mm-hmm, mm-hmm. for anointing there'd mm-hmm. probably be overlap there for sure mm-hmm. um but we wouldn't necessarily think of it as in the sense of you know we might have um may even use in a kind of in a vernacular in the charismatic church that well that was an anointed service <laughs> right <laughs> no one's ever said that about my services no. that would be yes that would but that would be or that was anointed is that preaching. just is that just saying like that was that was ripping like that it was rocking. well i you know the imagery i think is that it, thinking of the the Holy Spirit as oil, right? And so yeah, that yeah, the Holy yeah. Spirit's presence was very favorable yeah. today. Yeah, in the in that service, sure. or or the the pastor. If I was going to say the pastor preached with extra fervor, or mm-hmm. their words had particular impact, sure. then it might be an anointed sure. preaching. Sure. And so the anointing would, like I said, the anointing would be something more spiritual or yeah. ethereal that conveyed impact through the actions of what Mm -hmm, was doing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um and so probably some of the the ways and like you had said there's there are the issues of jesus called um christ literally means the anointed one right and um and we we see that throughout scripture that we have people that are anointed in Mm -hmm. the sense of there's a divine purpose and a divine right. favor in their life to accomplish right. something on behalf of God. Um, and so we would tend to emphasize that particular understanding of anointing is we'd look at the person who is prophesying over people or praying for healing mm. or preaching God's word, that kind of stuff mm. as, as having a, a, even actually the, um, uh, having the unction for, you know, that's the distinction, right? The, the, the unction is a thing that you have. What it, what were you saying to you? What's an unction to you? Unction unction is like, I think unction. I mean, is a reference to the oil itself, right? Okay. But like, I mean, it makes. So me, is the unction like if I was to say I have an unction, you would say I'd have a vial of oil. No, I'd say I have an oil stock. <laughs> an oil stock. Yeah, it's called a stock. It's like a little brass tube that I hold the oil. Oh, okay, in. okay. I have uh, one of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would call it a brass tube. I hold the oil. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. But the unction, so the unction would be in the charismatic lingo, the unction would be the the leading of the Holy Spirit to do something. Which is totally like, I mean, the neat thing about this, it reminds me, and I've not read it for a long time, so I might butcher it, but um, I mean, in the early, early, early church, I mean, it's neat that the Holy Spirit is is often, we describe the Spirit in so many ways, but one way is, has always this enduring image has been one of oil. Yeah, that's right. Which is yeah. weird because it's so kind of, in some ways, a uh, uh, contrary image to like fire or wind or, or breath or whatever right, right you know where tertullian i think in the like second or third century mm-hmm. is talking about baptism and he says you know basically what happens in baptism is you know the holy spirit is invoked and rests on the water like oil right and then when you, right. when you go under That's when you right. come up it's like you're coated in it right, right. yeah uh, and he would call that the, like that. the unction of the holy spirit so that's that's oh, a kind okay. of way in which i would if right. i remember right right yeah, yeah. interesting yeah um so what are the what are the various ways like um the the various different services or ordinances that would incorporate oil in the in the Anglican church? Well, mostly in the context of corporate anointing. Corporate anointing, mostly in the context of healing. So like, 
if I can reference the Book of Common Prayer here. Um, <laughs> so we have like there is a, a general service in the Book of Common Prayer called the Ministry to the Sick. Okay, right. And what's interesting is that really the um, the laying on of hands and anointing are kind of meant to go together. Uh, like the the book doesn't really envision them happening apart from one another. Right, right. Uh, one follows the other. But what's really interesting about it is if you go back. It's sort of meant to happen in the context of giving someone communion, of having them confess their sins and offering absolution, oh, okay. right? In an act of faith and prayer, right? And in a general way, praying for, um, you know, praying for them when you come into their house, right. come into their presence. Right. So, um, you know, the Book of Common Prayer, the Anglican Church in general, historically, would sort of see anointing as being a really special thing, and it even says, right. I think, in here, you shouldn't do it. As a priest alone, you should have another clergy member with you. Oh, really? It's taken very, very, right. very why, seriously. How, why would that be? Just the seriousness of it, or is there the seriousness of it? I right. mean, you're meant to kind of like if you're going to receive this anointing, right? You're, you're kind of meant to walk this person through a stage of, um, you know, of confession, of absolution, of reflection right. on their life. And the idea, I think, when they're sick, is that you're you're thinking about the end of their life. You know, this is like now is your chance to let's walk through your right. life. Let's confess. Let's think about this. Now, I mean, I, 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 this is like my confession time. I tend to treat anointing a little bit more liberally than that. Okay. So I will not always do it in the context of that full service. I, I do think that there is a power in using oil sure. to anoint people when they're sick. Uh, and I often do carry it with me if I'm in the hospital or something like that. So, um, okay. Now correct me if I'm, I'm wrong. When you're doing a service of the ministry to the sick, and yep. you're anointing them and leading them to confession and all that kind of stuff, um, repentance and praying mm -hmm. for them. Mm -hmm. Is the idea behind anointing them, is it the anointing is the means through which they would be healed? Or is it the preparation? Like Jesus was anointed before yeah. his burial, right? But he was also anointed to, um, like, like uh, when he quotes Isaiah 6, 1, the spirit has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, that yeah. kind of stuff. So, so what would there, would it be an either or, or a both and, you know, I mean, it's, it's, well, well, well of, you personally, if you're thinking I'm going to anoint someone, if I'm going to go to the sick yeah, to anoint yeah, yeah, them, am I yeah. thinking I'm anointing them as a, um, uh, is it, well, th here's three options and you can disagree with any of them mm -hmm. or choose your own. Are you anointing them strictly because the Bible says that we're supposed to anoint them? Because mm -hmm. you know, like we quoted James. Sure, sure. Are you anointing them because they could be they could be in their last throes of life, um, and so you're anointing them as preparation for, um, mm -hmm. you know, for the life of the age to come? Um, or are you anointing them because the issue is by anointing them we're declaring healing or or um, praying for healing or whatever? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> all of the above. Um, yeah, right. I mean, I mean, it's. I think, and this gets a little bit to a question that you brought up right before we started to record. Is it a sacrament? Sure. And I was reading. There's a guy in the, you know, the English. Well, I mean, in, in England in the early part of right. the, um, you know, the kind of heyday I think of our theological thinking as Anglicans, named John Jewell. Okay. And he was he was writing and thinking about about anointing, and and I think if I read him right, and I this was sort of a cursory breeze through this morning, but you know, he's really concerned with. You know, are we thinking about this oil as being um, like it's not magic, right? Like he's sure. he's not like sure. we're not putting this oil on someone to just sort of magic you're healed. Right. And I think it gets to the definition of a sacrament, which is that sacraments are always uh, outward and visible signs of inward invisible graces. Sure. So the oil, in my mind, the oil is an outward sign that we give to people. Of what God is doing inwardly okay. inside of them. So it could be, it could be any of the above. Then. Absolutely, absolutely. Right. I, then, I think you, there is a power in it to heal. Sure, but I don't think that it's some magic thing. Right. That that you know you're just going to throw it on anything and that thing is going to be restored and healed. I think it, right. there has to be a context of the faithfulness of the one receiving it, right. the faithfulness of the one giving it. Um, obviously the book of common prayer is concerned that you are coming to receive it, having confessed your sins, right? Like there is a right, kind right, of reception, right. worthy reception in, in a way. Um, and, uh, yeah. So, I mean, I think it's, it's an outward sign of what we're praying that God does. Right. Inwardly. So would you, in those moments then, would you have a, um, some kind of insight or an awareness of maybe not every time, but, uh, when you're anointing them, you have some insight or awareness that is, God wants to heal this person or this is there's a there's a purpose here that's less 
less general that it could be these things, whatever God's doing, and more specific to this is, um, I think this person is probably going to pass away and that the Lord's going to take that. That's and, a good, it's a good question. Yeah. You know, I, and I, um, the way I always, and I tell this to parishioners because often if I'm, if I'm in a room with someone and it's, it's very clear that pending a miracle, this person sure. is going to die. Sure. Sometimes it can feel a bit inauthentic to pray for healing. Right. Uh, and so sometimes my prayers with those people are, are not so much, I'm not saying, Lord, heal them. I'm saying, Lord, help them to die well, right? Like, right. like right. give them this rest. But at the same time, I think healing can also, like we oft, we always think of healing as being a recovery from a bad situation. Right. right. And sometimes I think the healing is actually, A, the healing could be spiritual, right? Like sure. if I'm praying for healing for a person that's dying, I'm not saying, you know, take away the cancer that's riddling their body and heal right. them. I'm saying, right. Lord, like help them to confess their sins, repent, help them to turn to you in these last hours, right? Right. You know, and, and help them to die and be received into your into your arm. That's healing. I mean, right, right. Who cares yeah, about is. who yeah, cares about true. the body yeah. in a way, right? I mean, not to sound all right, um, uh, like that. The body, of course, matters, but I mean, really, the healing we want is is the healing of soul right. and, and heart, not of um, not necessarily just of the body, right? Right. Uh, and so we, hope, yeah. What's the healing of the body if the heart's not healed? That's right. Also, that's yeah. right. And so we hope that. That oil, that the laying on of hands, that our prayers, that reading scripture, that these are all, you know, conducive to people finding that healing, right. that inner healing, I guess. Um, and 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 if it if it someone can be anointed to be healed in, um, you know, in body too, that's great. Right. You know, we had we had a healing service uh, at our church in Lent, I think, or right. or maybe last year. And there's, and there's oh, a, I remember you telling me about that. There's a that's number right. of people yeah. that you know, and it's not I'm not tooting my own horn because it's not me doing it. But we anointed them and laid hands, and there's a number of people that there was things they right. suffered from that have not returned, chronic things, right. you know. So, right. um, I mean, that's God at work. Um, and you anointed them with, each with oil. Yeah, 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 and laid on hands and right. everything. Um, don't tell I've been parting a lot of um, healing services that had nothing to do with oil. Right. <laughs> right. And seen people healed that had yeah, no, that for had, sure, right. for sure, for sure. Yeah, not and the, it, just to make the distinction that I I probably well, and when we get down to like, for instance, my wife. Um, loves anointing things with oil, right, right? And she does it all the time, right? And she'll frequently, like, if we have, if there's a meeting, she may go in and anoint the chairs with sure, oil, sure, right? sure, and, sure. Um, and in the in this charismatic wheelhouse, we we had talked, I think, in a in a previous episode about um, the fact that we would anoint houses. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? yeah so yeah, it's yeah. not like oils no, outside no, no, of the wheelhouse, no. right? It's it's just, uh, and I think the distinction that that we kind of discover between and you, I, you had made it, you said this, you said something a couple months ago. I don't remember what it was, but it was, I, mean, I remember the general tenor of it. Mm, and I'm sure it was very good. It was very <laughs> insightful, but it was somehow how the, in the charismatic type of environment, we tend to emphasize um, the unseen and, mm. and then uh, juxtapose over against the more sacramental liturgical tend to emphasize the scene right, as, right. as, um, more, you know, I'll, I'll say pointing towards the unseen, although I know right, it's more right, than that, right? right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not just yeah, pointing yeah. towards it. And so, um, there's, there's, there's just, there's a, a different emphasis mm -hmm. on each one. And, um, and so what I think that, that what happens in the, the, that unseen emphasis, the emphasis on the unseen, uh, that something's happening in the spirit mm -hmm. is then we don't know how to make the, the, the conclusion, like I'll just comment on the fact that I had mentioned kind of in in a pejorative way um, how people get uh, wrapped up into some of these companies that sell oils like right. uh, Young Living and um, this is not a pitch for any of these companies. I, I know people that get very, yeah, <laughs> they get, uh, Aaron has some, uh, doTERRA yeah, yeah. I think is the one, she's got some um, essential oils, sure. that kind of stuff. Uh, although she's never been a person that would like buy and sell them as a matter of, yeah. um, anyway. Uh, and so there's this, what, what happens in it with some of it is there is, there is something to be said for the physical substance of oil. Um, and because of, in the charismatic world, I wonder, I'm just wondering out loud basically mm -hmm, with this mm -hmm. is because we have a hard time making the connection between the spiritual and the natural, mm -hmm. we make a bunch of reasons why the natural is important. And so rather than mm -hmm. just saying, because God said, right, right. Um, because it communicates something in the spirit that is important, and there's a both and there, yep. we say, oh, well, look at the healing properties of oil. So we have to convince ourselves uh, that the natural application of it 
has a use. Right. As right. opposed to just saying, no, the function of the use is right. literally, right. there's not a distinction between the material and the physical in that moment. Right. Right. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, just wondering out loud because, so we have to make those logical conclusions mm -hmm. that there's got to be a reason for it. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And not everybody, I'm not saying that. I, my uh, Steve Schroeder, you know, yeah, we've yeah, out yeah. here a number of times. He's, he loves a good anointing service. Yeah. I mean, when, when I first came, when I came to Summerside with, uh, and announced to the church that we were moving here, mm -hmm. uh, we had an anointing service. Steve was with me and we anointed everybody in the service. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was, it was really, to me, it was a sign of family. Like this is my family. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I really felt like I was anointing my brothers and sisters. Sure. Outward sign uh, of invisible inward. It was, I, I would yeah. totally agree. Yeah, I would totally agree. I think that's the, it wasn't an either or, but Steve tends to think that way mm -hmm. um, off the cuff. And I don't tend to think that way off right. the cuff. Right. I'll, I, I frequently find myself going, oh, I wish I had oil on me. <laughs> You know, I, right, and I do right. have a little vial of it yeah, that yeah. Steve gave to me, one to me and one to Aaron. Aaron always has it on her. I always forget it. Mm -hmm. um, and when I remember it, I use it because mm -hmm. uh, I do think there's, there is something to it. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's over and uh, over and beyond the issue of, well, when I anoint you with fuchsia oil or whatever, you know, I don't even know if that's an oil, you know, it right, does this right. to yeah, your yeah, brain yeah. or whatever. Right. Right. And yeah, that's fine. You know, I understand essential oils do stuff. I'm not, I'm not sure. saying that. Um, what I'm just saying is that there doesn't we don't have to convince ourselves that it's worthwhile to use it. Sure. When yeah. scripture says to do it. Right. And God it obviously pleases God of course, in of looking course. in the Old of Testament. Course. Um and there's there's nothing like the the metaphor of oil mm -hmm. pleased God, mm -hmm. right? It's no, 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 the, the literal oil. fragrance pleased yeah, yeah, God. Yeah, yeah. There's something Same with things tangible like incense about too, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Hmm. Uh, you and, uh, and so I probably the last thing. Maybe you can. I don't know if there's enough time to do this. We might need to do a whole other episode about this. Um, the we were talking with you. Oh, I don't, it was a couple months ago, mm -hmm. and you had explained to Aaron why the why the idea of a thing is important. Mm -hmm. Why the way the form that it takes is important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and you'd use the issue of looking at our table. Yeah, and seeing essentially the wood that con and this is in the con the um the the context was our conversation about communion and the importance right. of the sacrament of communion and so you had said you had taken the idea of our table right the wood that constituted it when it was built into a table didn't change the essence of it right you know, something along those lines you yeah, yeah it was yeah. a really good analogy and so I'm, I'm wondering is that can you apply that same thing mm -hmm. to oil that it doesn't praying for the person and anointing them with oil doesn't change the substance of the oil, um, but there is something something inherently inherent about the form that it takes when we pray for the person and all of that. Yeah, I mean, I'll I'll reiterate that if we have enough time, just in the context yeah. of communion, because maybe that'll help me to think through it. I mean, I think we were talking about, you know, when when we consecrate bread and wine in church, you know, for us it's not merely a symbol. We're right, not saying. Right. You know, here's a cracker that God has blessed. Eat it and think about Jesus as sacrifice. <laughs> like, right? well, yeah, we tend to do that. Yeah. We for us, I mean, it's like whether it becomes in an in a in a substantial way the body and blood of Christ right. is sort of open to interpretation. We would certainly say that when you eat it, what you receive is the body and blood of Christ. Right. right. Are you eating a piece of flesh? We can talk about that. What right. you're receiving is the body and blood of Christ. Right. And so I think I think what I said about that idea of the table is, you know, if we took apart a house and a boat or a table and a bench and you just broke it down into its constituent parts, lumber, screws, nails, yeah, and you put it beside each other in the ground, you're not going to look at one pile and go, that's a bench. And you're not going to look at a table and go, that's a table. Right. But yet, you know, when you put them together in a certain form, you get a table and you would never confuse right. a table for a bench and right. same with the, right. with the, t with the bench. Right. Or if you took a, a mug, right. I mean, this and the plate we ate lunch off of is exactly the same sure. stuff, Yeah, yeah. but something makes this a mug and something right. makes that. A plate. Right. Right. And so this idea is that there's something true about what a mug is essentially. And I think there's something th that is sort of under the, the substance. And so there's yeah. something true about what communion is that is under the right. substance. Um, so in terms of oil, I mean, I think it's much the same, right? Like the oil we use is we're not just pouring it out of the, the, um, you know, olive oil jug. It's, it's blessed. It's consecrated right, right. oil for that use. Right. There's a um, point, there's an importance to setting it aside. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, is it, is it magic? No, it's not magic, but there's something, there's something when that happens, same within communion, where there is a true sort of substantial change right. in the underlying thing that allows it to convey God's grace in a particular way. Right. You know? Right. 
Yeah, that, and, that, and it's not yeah. it's not the means of grace; it's a means of grace, right, right? right? And that's why oil is like some people do and some people don't, and that's fine. I think Scripture does say we should do it. Right, right. It's a good right. thing to do, but yeah, right. We can argue about the particulars of it, but there is something important about it. Yeah, um, and, and and we see a number of times in, in the Gospels alone where uh, the anointing anointing happens, mm-hmm. and so whether we look at it as the um, the mark upon a person for service, like like you were marked for service with sure, oil, right? Sure. And that 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 mark doesn't leave you because the oil has faded away. No, indeed, right? you're yeah, indeed. you're still marked for service. Yeah. So there is there's something material in the actual uh, the actual ordination of you as a mm-hmm, priest, mm-hmm. right? Um, but there's also something intangible about that as well. Yeah, totally. And it's, so it's not an either or thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and we don't have to try and mock up some reason why it's important. Mm-hmm. We just say it is important because it's important. Yeah. yeah. Um, and and so I, you know, we can talk about it differently. But um, mm-hmm. I, you know, you know, I I like I like thinking about it. What how we just how we mm-hmm. just talked about it. Um, I don't feel like we've exhausted this topic. This no. almost maybe demands a part two because we, yeah, we hear a lot could, from you. Yeah, but, yeah, we probably could part two yeah. it. Um, yeah, there's. I mean, there's a lot of thoughts. I remember John Paul, uh, the, one of the um, guys who mentored me, mm. um, talking about how oil, oil essentially, dec- it's essentially declaring a thing is returning back to its original use mm. as that's intended neat. by God. Yeah. Um, mm. And so that's you know that's another thing we could talk about. Yeah. Yeah. And um, the mm. anyway, I think uh, yeah, there's a lot we could talk about. But mm-hmm. tell us what your thoughts are. Yeah. Um, because what, what, how in your life, what have you used oil for? Mm -hmm. Um, and for that matter, maybe even communion, what does communion mean to you? And, um, is there, is it an unimportant thing? Is it an important thing to you? And, um, am I, do you think I'm out to lunch when I say, well, that's an anointed person because they have a good message or are you familiar with that kind of language too? You think I'm out to lunch? Yeah. Maybe Colin's out to lunch. (laughs) Yeah, that's right. Maybe we should all just go out to lunch. Maybe we should just go out to lunch. (laughs) Um, so thanks everybody for tuning in. Uh, maybe we will follow up with another episode on this topic and, um, until next time. We'll see you then. Yeah, that's right. Check out silentfire.ca and, uh, follow us on all your favorite places and uh, look us up on Facebook too. Uh, We'd love to stay in touch with you guys. So awesome. Love your comments and uh, super, super encouraging for us to see people engaging and, uh, and appreciating these conversations. So until the next time, we bless you.